Hi, I'm Amy Kesey. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Physics and Astronomy and the Space Science Center at the University of New Hampshire. Hi, my name is Caitlin Witt. I'm a PhD candidate in the Department of Physics and Astronomy at WVU. So I actually ended up at WVU because um, the person who is now my husband <laughs> was already at WVU for medical school. And um, I came and I was actually using it as sort of a transition initially. So I had majored in math and had taken uh, as much physics as I could fit into my undergraduate at the time and was trying to go into something, astronomy, space science, um, but knew I needed to catch up on some physics. So my initial plan was to take some physics classes, get a little bit caught up, and then um, once my husband was done with medical school, um, move to another place. But once I got started into research at West Virginia, um, I was able to do some space science um, research and also get involved in um, other plasma physics laboratory research and it ended up being a good place to be. And then I stayed around and got my PhD at WU. And then I actually was at WU um, as a postdoc and research faculty for several years after that. So my story is a little bit different. Um, I was intending to do a PhD right from when I discovered that WVU existed. But when I first got started in research, I eventually started working in a different area of the collaboration I'm in now while I was an undergraduate. And I enjoyed that. And I applied to a lot of different schools because PhD applications are difficult and it's hard to predict where you might get in. But um, I, I was hoping to stay and do something at least a little bit similar. And WVU actually has a really huge group that works within this collaboration, which is really great. And there are actually a few different faculty members that work in different areas. So that was something that really appealed to me was having that option to sort of play around and learn exactly what I wanted to do. And it worked out really well because um, I ended up finding my current advisor and we have a good research relationship and personal relationship. So it's worked out really well and it's been a very supportive environment. So I study space physics and the overarching goal is to understand how um, our region of space right around Earth is affected um, by stuff that's coming from the sun and it can actually affect us, um, our technology, like our satellites, our power grids. And so I'm hoping that eventually my research will um, have a big impact on us being able to understand what happens during those events and be able to protect our infrastructure. And some of the bigger goals I have, um, I do a lot of data analysis right now from satellite missions, um, but I've been working in some instrument development and would eventually like to be more involved in missions and perhaps even be um, a pr principal investigator of a NASA mission. Yeah, and as for me, um, I'm still a graduate student, so I think my career could easily change. But as for right now, I'm hoping to stay in research longer term. And um, I'm a gravitational wave astronomer, which means that we're looking for really subtle changes in space itself. So while this has been detected by some other instruments, we're really hoping that our instrument, a pulsar timing array, will make a detection within the next few years. and then. We'll get to the thing that I think is the most interesting, which is actually characterizing these really large scale events and the sources that make them. In general, people have different experiences and different backgrounds. And in order to be able to tackle a lot of the problems that society faces, we need uh, lots of different ways of thinking about how to solve problems. So it's really important to have all kinds of different people in science um, and um, you know having other women helps everybody else realize that you know women definitely belong in science and working on these problems and they have amazing abilities um, and and so it's important not only to have them working on it but let everybody else realize that that they can do it and 
that they're they excel at it um and so also serving as role models um and you know making sure when there's you know policy issues or barriers that um there are ways to fix the policies and the barriers so that more people are able to participate i would say that having women in science is important because we make up more or less half the planet um i, I think a lot about the ruth bader ginsburg quote when she was asked when will be th there be enough women on the supreme court and she answered when there are nine and we know that you know, statistically, there will always be some sort of imbalance because when you draw from an even split population, you get, sometimes you come up with a group that's all men, sometimes you come up with a group that's all women and it needs to happen evenly. Um, we shouldn't settle for, we have more women than is statistically average for physics departments because it, it won't be truly great until we can get as many people involved in STEM as we can. Um, and I, I agree with what Amy said. This teaches that anybody can do anything they want as long as the environment is prepared to support people. So when I was at West Virginia University, I was involved with the Association for Women in Science. And there were a lot of women in that organization um, at varying career stages from students all the way up to senior uh, career women and they were all very helpful it was very nice to have that group of people um, give advice and just be there to talk about things um, and more recently um, there were women in physics lunches that i was involved in um, so i just think it's nice to have um, lots of supportive women around um, to help you along at every stage I think I've had a similar experience. I also attend the Women in Physics lunches, and I think I actually met you there for the first time, Amy. Um, but I also have a female academic advisor, so I have had a great mentor to look up to the whole time that I've been here. And more recently, once I formed my PhD committee, we started um, with my academic advisor as the chair, and then um, there was another faculty member that was a very obvious choice to be on my committee, who's also a woman. And then we were halfway to the four members and we were like, hmm, let's have an all-female committee. I would like that. Um, just because it's not something that's super common and I wanted to have that network of mentors who I would have these regular check-ins with once a year and who would ultimately be responsible for me getting my PhD. Sometimes we think about diversity, be it gender diversity or racial diversity um, or anything else as a recruitment problem. We need to get more people into the field. But I personally think that what's more important is retaining these people and showing them that they are welcome in this field and they can succeed there. And then as time goes on, more and more people will come because they see that they can su succeed there. So. As for what needs to change, I think just making sure that the field emphasizes inclusivity and has that willingness to change. I think some people who have been here a long time maybe are not used to feeling uncomfortable or being willing to take a step into the unknown to make a change. But as soon as we're willing to do that, more and more people will be willing to get involved. I agree with a lot of what you said. Um, there are definitely still some policies in effect that can make it challenging, um, sort of in academia in general, um, and um, some people that are not as welcoming um, that definitely make make uh, make make you feel like you don't necessarily belong, and that that is a huge challenge, and it's hard to change specific people's opinions um but i think if we can affect some of the policies um i think that will make a difference and then slowly as more and more people are able to take a, take part then the people we can maybe change more people's opinions but it may just take some aging out as well 
So I think the opportunities that have been provided by COVID, um, I find it interesting that I've just said opportunities, <laughs> um, uh, but we really have learned to think about different ways to collaborate, to do work. Um, and I definitely think that some of these things are gonna stay to in some ways help the field be more inclusive. How can we have conferences that enable people that either can't travel for physical reasons or childcare reasons or financial reasons, how can they still participate in conferences and other uh, collaborative meetings? Um, and how, you know, what other ways can we do things where before there was a barrier uh, to somebody participating? Um, we've really opened up those doors quite a bit and need to make sure that we incorporate that in the future. I absolutely agree. And I think um, one other thing that I've noticed is throughout quarantine and COVID and working from home and all of the difficulties that that's presented, one common thread among people discussing it has been resiliency, whether it's on the be behalf of whatever organization is discussing it or of individual members, so workers or students, things like that. And I, I think what will be important to remember is that while resiliency is good, these institutions need to make sure that they're remembering that all of their members are human and not the only metric of success is their productivity. Um, it, I've personally had a very hard time not getting down on myself for having days where I'm not as productive as I know that I could be. But life is different right now. We're all going through some really difficult times and we should remember after this that anybody could go through a difficult time at really any time and we should be accepting of that and help people succeed in whatever way they do best, whether that's working remote, whether that's attending conferences remotely, or whether that's working together in person. So I think there are a lot of challenges, um, certainly in terms of early career people being able to, um, you know, get in the lab and do the work that they need to do. That's um, been a big challenge. Um, and dealing with funding situations, um, making sure the funding agencies are being flexible with how we are spending um, our money and getting extensions um, and still supporting people even when they aren't able to work at full capacity. Um, I think there's, there's gonna be a lot of questions surrounding that for many years. Um, and a, a huge challenge, of course, with, you know, talking about um, attending these conferences virtually is they haven't really figured out the best way to provide those networking opportunities um, that really grow out of the in-person um, conferences. And so realizing that that's been a challenge and may affect a lot of early career people um, uh, that have been affected by this um, this year um, and how that might be a long lasting effect for them and thinking about especially in academia if they're tenure track people how that's going to affect tenure decisions um, i know a lot of, of universities have implemented tenure clock delays um, which can be helpful but that also um, changes your timeline for when you get uh, raises due to promotions and so results in loss of income over your lifetime um, and so there's there's a lot of challenges that are coming out of this. So um, just making sure that institutions and funding agencies are aware of all these implications um, for early career people um, is, is something that's going to be a conversation for many years. Yeah, um, I've had a few friends who are on the job market this year, and all I can say is that I'm certainly glad that I was not because it was a particularly rough year in what is a rough job job market in any year. Um, I, I think it, it's going to be difficult for a little while. Um, there, there are not many jobs. And I, I think that with the reality of funding, it's going to keep being difficult. But I certainly hope that after this year where the whole world had to watch scientists come together and do something really incredible, which is 
protect all of humanity from a pandemic and come up with a vaccine or multiple vaccines on a really short time scale. Hopefully everyone will see how important science as a whole is and how critically it needs people to get involved and have caring people who will do things on behalf of others. So I will just say, um, and I kind of said it before, but uh, science is a lot of fun. Um, you get to work with a lot of interesting people and it's very flexible. You know, if you like working in teams, there's a team to work on. If you're a little more productive on your own, um, you, there's a lot of independent projects that you can work on. Um, and there's a lot of flexibility in what you do. Um, there's certainly, you know, guidelines in terms of what gets funded, but there's still a lot of freedom within that um, to pursue something that interests you. And as I mentioned, there's so many different fields that you can get involved in. Um, just explore everything that's out there, uh, take advantage of it. And even if it doesn't end up being your career, it's really good to learn science because science affects our lives in so many ways. Uh, just like we were talking about with understanding the vaccines and um, in my field, understanding the implications for, for how it affects our technology. Um, you know, thinking about climate change, thinking about all these things that are affecting us and affect um, policy decisions that have to be made. It's great to have science background. So I think it's imperative that everybody learns some science um, because it will affect your life and and how we run our country and all, all those sorts of things. I would also say that STEM is for everyone and it, it needs everyone to go as far as it possibly can and for us to learn everything that we want to about the universe, be it things that are close to home or things that are far away. So the more people we get, the more people there are going to be present who are willing to fight for others and make the changes that are necessary to make STEM an inclusive place for all types, women included.